Students, have you ever lost your temper with a teacher? What's your story? Obligatory, not me. When I was in high school, a girl absolutely lost her crap on my math teacher. The way class generally went was that we'd go in and he'd have the day's assignment written on the board. Then he'd spend the first 20 minutes of class teaching new concepts and going over problems. Then he'd give us about 30 minutes to work on our assignments and he'd sit at his desk and answer questions. Overall, I really liked this style, but some did not. This girl did not. About three-fourths of the way through the year, she snapped. The class was no different than any other. He explained the new stuff, did some examples, and then said, Anyone who needs individual help, just line up on my desk and I'll be happy to help. She lost it. What do you mean? That's it? I don't want to wait in line for 20 minutes. Help me now. This is BS. She was getting angrier and angrier. And to my teacher's credit, the angrier she got, the calmer and quieter my teacher got. And the calmer and quieter he was, the more furious she would get. Teacher, calm. I understand you're upset. How about we go to the hallway and talk about it? Student, yelling. No! Help me with this here and now! Teacher, calmer, quieter than before. Now there's no need for that kind of language. We can discuss this civically. I'm happy to help you in any way I can. Student, even angrier and louder. Screw this! I hate this school! Teacher, still very calm. I'm sorry you're so frustrated. What can I do? Student, now screaming as loud as she possibly can. Screw everything! Incoherent screaming and cursing. This is when the principal walked in and took the girl out of class. The teacher left for a moment to talk to the principal while we could hear this girl screaming all the way to the office. Just every expression in the book, all directed at the teacher. When it was all over, the teacher calmly walked back in, stood at the front and said, Well, does anyone else have a problem with me? I'm happy to discuss it if we can be civil. No one said a word. Okay then, anyone who needs help, come see me. Class went on like normal after that. In retrospect, that teacher handled that like a pro in every possible way. I never saw that girl in class or in school again, so something had to have been going on to set her off like that, but I've never seen a student go off like that before or since, and I've worked as a teacher and sub for nearly a decade. Something had to be going on with that girl, but I have no backstory. I don't know if she was struggling with grades or with that class, or if that teacher said or did something to set her off. I just know what I saw in class. I'm certain something was going on with that girl to set her off, though. Either at home or school, I just think that math class was her last straw for whatever reason. Story 2 a couple of weeks into my senior year of high school, the president gave a speech about the importance of school or something. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Anyway, all the teachers in my school had to set up their projectors so that we could watch it. My math teacher couldn't figure out how to get her projector working, so being a nerdy kid, I offered to help. She had a fit. I started screaming about how she wasn't stupid and how I needed to just sit down and shut up. After a few more minutes of her failing to fix it, she pointed at me and ordered me to fix it. I said, fix it yourself. She told the whole class to go next door to watch the speech in that teacher's room. When we got up to leave, she pulled me to the side and told me that when the class got back, I was going to stand up and apologize for being so rude to her. I refused and went to join the rest of the class. She spent the rest of the year making my life miserable. She told me on several occasions that she was going to make sure that I failed her class. Sure enough, I failed her class. Only in this class have I ever failed. If you're wondering, I did report it. My parents went to the administrators, but they didn't want to do anything and said it was an issue for the math department head. The department head was a good friend of my teacher and took her side. The class wasn't her requirement for graduation, and it was the last semester before I was done with high school, so I didn't care to waste any more time on it. Also, she can fail me in math since the answers are either right or wrong. I would turn in homework assignment and she wouldn't get them. Students weren't allowed to keep a copy of the tests because the school was worried about test compromises, so she could basically give me whatever she wanted on them and I couldn't prove anything. If there was a dispute about the test grades, the school policy was to have the department head regrade the test. But as I mentioned, the department head was a friend of hers and found that all of the tests that I disputed were graded correctly. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, since I never got to see them. Story 3. Not just at a teacher, but at an entire department. The English department at my first college was staffed by people who, by and large, were a-holes. Their idea of a writing workshop was having you email the assignment to the teacher and then making you pay at least $10 to print out enough copies of your story for the entire class. I don't know why we couldn't just put it up on a message board somewhere. They were built into our school's online infrastructure. The teacher of this workshop also made it abundantly clear that he didn't care about his students. I'm pretty sure he was a grad student teaching the class for credit, but he acted like a major jerk and pretty clearly didn't read any of the stories beyond a basic skimming. We took quizzes and computers and he didn't care if we googled the answers as long as we got it done before class ended. He drove one of his students to a panic attack on the last day because he had acted like such a creep to them, micromanaging one of their stories. It was bizarre. They also had this weird thing where they would gather every English major in the college into the chapel on campus every Thursday in order to have you listen to someone read from their work. It was advertised as creative writing common time. 
but it literally just meant sit down, shut up, and listen to someone read their works that were rejected from a lit magazine. No laptops, no phones, no books, and if you missed one session of this out of an entire semester, you failed the class. You had to take four semesters of this if you wanted to pass. By the end of the first semester, I'd had enough. I'd missed a session and the makeup assignment was just as bizarre. You had to find an audio recording of a work online, read it by the author, and analyze how they read it. Like, what? It really, really got bad on the last day. Undergrad students were finally allowed to read, and either they didn't vet them at all or they vetted them really poorly, because there was a student who read a graphic depiction of crimes and the teacher just let them. A few of the other students in the building left in disgust. I almost joined them. Needless to say, I dropped out of the English program at this college and transferred to a university whose English department is not staffed by psychopaths. It took me an extra year to graduate. I don't care. It was better than that. Story 4. I hadn't been doing well in calculus all year, but I was trying my best and just struggling. My teacher was one of the cool ones, the kind who acted laid back and cracked jokes and all that. I think this guy just thought I wasn't trying, and he was as frustrated with me as I was with myself. One day in class, he made a sort of passive-aggressive joke at my expense, something about, if you would just try harder. He didn't even say it in front of other students, just to me. But I was so over him, thinking I wasn't trying, that I got up and walked straight out into the school's counselor's office. I would have been sent there anyway for walking out of class, so I decided to expedite the process. She was really kind and talked me down from being so upset. Anyway, that was on a Friday, so I didn't see my calculus teacher again until Monday. I was hoping we could just pretend it didn't happen, but no such luck. He pulled me into the hallway to talk and truly, genuinely apologized. He offered to adjust his office hours, which didn't work for me, to give me extra help. He ended up helping me pass the class. Just barely, but I still passed. I wouldn't have graduated without it. In retrospect, just talking to him more openly from the get-go probably would have been the more mature thing to do. But I was an awkward, self-doubting teenager who didn't know how to ask for help. In the end, the experience helped me improve that skill and advocate for myself. I still hate calculus, though. Story 5 my IT teacher wanted to inspect my worksheets, a Word document or something, but anyway, she accidentally deleted the file. I was upset and tried to point out that she had deleted my work. She started to shout at me, telling me I should have saved frequently. I shouted back, telling her that wasn't the issue, and she outright deleted the file. It got pretty heated. The parents were called. We were outright yelling at each other for a good couple of minutes, to the point where we both were in tears. She should have known better. A few years later, my sister had her when she went to that school, and that same teacher berated my sister, calling her names, etc., Anyway, it was a long time ago, and I was pretty stressed at the time. I can't remember exactly how, but after several attempts, I wasn't able to restore it. Looking back at what I know now, there are things I could have done to restore it, even going as far as giving myself admin rights and having a poke around. But I was 14 at the time. I was being taught by IT by a French teacher. Story 6. When I was in high school, we had this small, angry teacher who played rugby, or at least tried to, and was always belittling students to feel better about himself. One day, we had physical education and our teacher couldn't come, so the little and always moody teacher who played rugby came to replace her. The little teacher was trying to show off his skills at rugby and making our class play some games where we had to tackle who had the ball. We didn't tackle hard enough, so the little guy joined to tackle some students and show off his grandness. He was having fun being unstoppable and yelling at us if that was all we could do. I was kind of mad and I just went running at full speed at him. The little teacher got tackled and hit the ground. That was something our class laughed about all year. He used to despise and treat us like he was reaffirming his manliness, though he had some good points too and was kind of crazy. It didn't seem like a student-teacher relationship, so it wasn't that boring most of the time. I guess that's the reason why most of us still remember that little moody teacher. Enjoying these tales from the classroom? Show your appreciation by liking this video and subscribing to stay tuned for future episodes. Story 7 I had a teacher at a private college who enjoyed calling everybody stupid and said that we were only studying there because our parents showed how much they earned. There were a lot of scholarship students, myself included, but who cares? I can't be quiet when I hear these kinds of things, so we discussed them in almost every class. She failed most of the class in the first course. We fought with the dean and she let us do another test with another teacher. Everybody passed. On the second course, she gave us the same thing, but this time the dean said we were being dramatic. The teacher decided that there would not be a test, only a group presentation. She settled the groups. I got stuck with two lazy guys who did nothing. I did the entire paper and the presentation. Both of them got a 9, A, and I got a 7, C-. minus. It was the last time I did paperwork with the names of the people who did nothing, no matter who they were. I added a C to pass but failed because of a point. I tried to talk to the dean, but she didn't listen to me, so I had to do the course again. I could do it with another teacher, but I chose her. I was the worst student she ever had. I sat in the first row, always making a fool of her. The next year, she wasn't a teacher there anymore. She made me lose my scholarship because of that grade. I do not regret it. I would do it again with an extra bit of cruelty. Story 8 This happened to me in college. I was nearing the end of my senior year and needed to take an elective to satisfy degree requirements. I took up basketball since I loved the game. 
The professor was an assistant coach for the school's basketball team and he didn't care about the class. Our class starts at 8 a.m. in the old basketball gym on campus, and that was the only way that we could get into the gym. A few times he had a colleague come up and open the gym for us, but at least seven or eight times over the semester, he just didn't show up at all. So after 15 minutes, the students just went back to their dorms or apartments. I was a commuter, driving 45 minutes each way so I had to skip work on the days I had class. I was working to pay for school. Near the end of the semester, someone in class asked him about his attendance, and he made the announcement that anyone who didn't show up for the final exam, basically whoever could make a basket, would fail. On the day of the final exam, he didn't show up. No colleague, nothing. On that last day, there were 30 students freezing cold sitting outside of the gym in December. During professor evaluations, I ripped him a new one and wished I could have let him know to his face that his laziness cost me money. Imagine waking up early enough to drive 45 minutes each way to an 8 a.m. class only to find out that your professor decided not to come in. Not once or twice, but eight times. We all waited 15 minutes for him to show up, but he never did, so we left. I value my time, even if it's more than dollars and cents. The professor didn't value anyone else's. It cost me money because the time spent driving to and from a no-show class could have been spent earning. I don't care about getting a basketball education, but I did care that he made it sound like he would fail us if we didn't show up. Especially on the day of the final, because he made the announcement as if he was pissed he was questioned for not showing up in the past. It was as if he deliberately wanted to screw us over. Story 9. We had a government professor in college who canceled constantly. We were supposed to have four exams, but by the time we were three-fourths through the year, we only had one exam. The class met twice a week and he canceled at least once a week, if not more. He finally came in the week before finals and apologized and explained that his wife was sick and he was caring for her, she had cancer, and he thought he could take care of her and keep working, but clearly, he couldn't. He was taking a leave of absence as soon as the semester ended. He said he spoke to the school and department and was still going to give the finals so the class didn't lose out on the credit. And he assured everyone in class that they would either get an A or a B. Pass the final and get an A, fail it and get a B. Those who cared about grades did the final. Those who just wanted the credit. This was a literal intro government class a lot of people took for the credit towards their other majors came in, wrote their name in the exam, and turned it in blank. Still gotta be. Well, I was never sure if I should be furious with the school or happy with my free A. I was not a government major, so I didn't really care. Well, at least he cares, as opposed to that basketball teacher. You know. Story 10. There was a high school English teacher, Miss Blades, who was ignoring me for a while. It's worth mentioning that she didn't really like me for some reason. I wasn't a bad or annoying kid. In fact, it was very non-confrontational. It mostly kept to myself in and out of class. So I don't know what that was about. Anyway, I had my hand up because I had to use the bathroom and she kept pacing about the room, answering other kids' questions but would glance at me and immediately look away. After about five minutes with my hand up and getting ignored and about to crap my pants, I whistled as loud as I could. Interrupting anyone was completely out of character for me. Well, once upon a time, I had chipped one of my front teeth so I could whistle extremely loud because of it. My whistle was just that. It was the whistling equivalent of an ambulance siren in a closed room. Absolutely deafening. The entire room got quiet and she snapped her head around so fast. As her name might suggest, Miss Blades was staring daggers into my face. The one kid goes, Oh, he just called you a dog. Ooh. Then she gains serious momentum from that one-off and says, Oh, I don't think so. You think I'm a dog? You think I'm a dog? I got sent to the principal's office for disrespecting an ignorant teacher. I used the bathroom on the way there. After that stunt, she definitely was a dog of the female kind. Story 11. Man, this really reminds me of a story I have about a teacher of mine. Also in high school, a teacher wanted to play a movie off a disc, but she kept pressing the eject button, expecting it to be the play button, or some crap. I don't know what she was thinking. The third time, she went to press the same button after inserting the disc again. I may have slightly snapped that she shouldn't press the button, to which my teacher responds, Well, sorry, at least I got along better with people than with computers. Cue class laughter due to the sick burn of the teacher. It sticks around for a bit, but the next day, people have forgotten all about it. Fast forward to the next time I have that class. At the start of the lesson, the teacher waits until everyone is seated. I'm sorry about what I said last lesson. I was unaware that you're autistic. As far as I'm aware, I don't have any form of autism. Maybe she should have called me a spastic due to my ADHD, but honestly, 10 years later and I'm still salty about that one, and it probably left her vapid head the moment after she said it. Story 12. I had a Spanish teacher, and in order to gain other students' sympathy, she would make fun of one of the students in kind of torment, not that badly, but, well, that student for this hour of class. Of course, other students would sometimes laugh because class was super boring, so it was like a show. I hate that. Of course, she would pick the students that didn't reply back to her provocation, the low-profile type, and of course, she would use the perfect excuse just after being mean. Oh, it's just a joke. Once that guy who never caused trouble to anyone was her victim of the day. She takes him as an example to describe a homeless guy in a picture. 
After only 10 long minutes, he stands up and leaves the classroom crying. And when she stops him before he leaves, he tells her his dad passed away the previous night and pushes her away. Once the door closed behind him, she paused for a second and used a crying voice to repeat what he had just said. My dad just passed away. Cry, poor baby. Before I realized it, she received my Spanish book in the face. I called her an ugly witch. Yeah, my insult level isn't great in Spanish. Everyone has moments of frustration, right? But let's remember it's how we handle them that truly matters. If you enjoyed hearing these stories, make sure to check out the next video. Students, what's your, well that just happened, classroom story? Story 3 is unbelievable. See you there.